Welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing subgroups generated by subsets of a group. Okay, so we've now seen the definition of a subgroup generated by a certain subset. We've also seen the definition of the closure of a subset. What I now want to show you is that actually the closure of a subset, which we know is a subgroup of the group capital G, is equal to the subgroup generated by that subset. They're, these two concepts truly are the same thing. And from Henceforth, we will uh, no longer talk about the closure of a subset A, we'll just talk about the subgroup generated by a subset A. Okay, so how are we going to prove then that these two things are equal to one another? Well, firstly, um, well actually, let me uh, spell out the strategy. So it's going to be the normal strategy for showing that two sets are equal to one another. Show that one is contained in the other and that the other is contained in the first one. Okay, if you show containment both ways round, then you can conclude that they're equal to one another. Okay, so firstly, note that the subgroup generated by A is going to be a subset of A closure. Okay, and the reason is that we know A closure is a subgroup of G which completely contains the set capital A. So remember, A is completely contained within A closure. Okay, that's something we discussed earlier, but I'll just remind you, it's because A closure is all these finite products of elements of the set capital A and their inverses. So, of course, it's going to include uh, products where you just have one element in the product, and um, you'll just take all the elements of the uh, set capital A and construct these one products for each of them. Okay, and that, of course, will force all of the elements of A to be in A closure. Okay? So, because it's a subgroup of G that completely contains the set capital A, it's one of the things that we'll have to intersect together when we're constructing the subgroup uh, of G generated by A. Okay, and therefore this subgroup of G generated by A is indeed going to be completely contained within A closure. But I claim that it's very easy to show containment the other way round as well. Okay, so it's also going to be the case that A bar is going to be contained in the subgroup of G generated by A. And the reason for this is just look at the definition of A bar. A bar is the elements of the group capital G that you can get by taking finite length products of elements of the set capital A and their inverses. Okay, this subgroup here completely contains the set capital A, so it's going to also have to contain all of the inverses of the set capital A because it must have it must be closed under inverses, and therefore it's going to have to contain all finite products of elements of the set A and their inverses, because it's going to be closed under multiplication. Okay, so indeed it's actually going to have to contain every single element in here. Okay, so truly therefore, A bar is going to be contained in the subset of A, um, sorry, the subgroup of G generated by A. Okay, so now we can indeed, from both of these statements, the only option then is that A bar, the closure of A, is actually equal to the subgroup of G generated by A. Okay, so that means now that we will no longer refer to the closure of A, we will just call it the subgroup of G generated by A, the subgroup generated by A. And we've now got these two different interpretations of it. Either you can actually go through every single subgroup of G that contains the subset A and intersect them all together to construct this subgroup generated by A, or alternatively what you can do is uh, take um, all, all finite products of elements of the set A and their inverses, find all the elements of the group capital G that you can construct in this way, and that subset of G will now be the subgroup generated by A. Okay, so we've now got two different ways of constructing the subgroup generated by a certain subset. Finally, what I want to say is that the interpretation of actually, well, uh, what I want to say is that actually constructing the subgroup of A, so, sorry, the subgroup of G generated by A in this way by taking all finite products of elements of A and their inverses simplifies hugely if you're working in an abelian group. Okay, so if G is abelian, okay, then uh, actually constructing the subgroup 
uh, of G generated by A is far simpler. Okay, and the reason is that before, when we were working in an arbitrary group that wasn't necessarily abelian, this set was extremely complicated because you could have the same element appearing over and over again but in different positions and you weren't allowed to collect them all together. Okay, whereas if it is commutative, if composition is truly commutative, then we can collect all of these same elements uh, together and we can collect all of its inverses and cancel it all down. Okay, so if you're uh, working in the abelian group, then the subgroup generated by A is now going to just be the subset that looks like this. So you'll just have all of the elements of A, okay, all, well, all finite products that consist of elements of A, and now it'll just be A1 to a certain integer power Z1, A2 to a certain integer power Z2, all the way up to AN, let's say, to a certain integer power ZN, where, of course, the AIs are still elements of the set capital A, and the ZIs are now integers. Okay, and now you can say that all of these will be distinct, so A1 will not be the same as A2, uh, etc., all the way along. Okay, you've collected all of the terms involving A1 together, okay, and you've cancelled out all of the inverses, and then you've overall got A1 appearing to some integer power. And if, of course, that's a positive integer, that means you have to compose A1 with itself that many times. If it's a negative integer, you have to compose A1 uh, inverse with itself the uh, modulus of that negative number number of times. Okay, uh, so constructing this subgroup generated by A in this way uh, according to the A closure formula becomes much more simple if we're working in an abelian group because you don't have to have d uh, the same element appearing more than once and uh, because it's in different positions, okay, because of commutativity, you can collect them all together, and therefore the formula simplifies hugely. Okay, so we'll call it there for this video.